This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is a 35-year-old man who has a penetrating injury with a sharp object about three months back and followed by dimness of vision, pain and redness. There's a small corneal scar suggesting a possible injury site. The cataract is fibrotic and seems to be absorbed. There is a possibility that the anterior and the posterior capsule could be torn already. The anterior capsule is wrinkled and becoming fibrotic. The patient has chronic inflammation. My preparation for this case is like this. My goal is to have a rexis somehow uh, in this case. I know it's difficult. But in the absence of a posterior capsule, I can at least fix the lens in the sulcus with optic capture. So this was my primary goal. In the event of losing both the anterior and the posterior capsule, I was prepared to do a secondary IOL fixation at a later date. Expecting a possible PC tear, I am ready with my vitrector. After seeing the anterior capsule, the wrinkled fragile anterior capsule becomes very much visible. These areas of the wrinkled capsule are the problematic areas. The capsule would be fused with the underlying calcified cortex and it would make it extremely difficult to tear it. And also there is a risk of the tear extending out in an uncontrolled manner. So I begin my capsulotomy with the cystitome. I start from a healthy region of the capsule and as expected hit a roadblock as soon as I reach this problematic area. The forceps couldn't also be of much use. So how to deal with it now? To handle the situation, I had learnt a small trick from Dr. Bharti who is an excellent surgeon and also she happens to be my better half. She had posted a video a few months back demonstrating this technique. So do watch it if you haven't yet. I hold the wrinkled capsule with the forceps and then using the edge of the bent 26G needle, the capsule is incised and then the cut extended in a circular manner. Some areas are very deeply adherent to the underlying cortex and it looks tough. Eventually the persistence pays off and I have somewhat circular but intact anti-capsule opening of a decent size. As expected there is no nucleus and I am just exploring the area now. I go in with my irrigation cannula and very early I realize that the calcific area which I see now is very much attached to the posterior capsule and is very difficult to separate. At this moment I realize that the posterior capsule is probably torn. Okay, now I want to perform a posterior capsule rexis because I can clear the visual axis. I'm going in with my rexis forceps and then grasp the torn edge of the posterior capsule and then perform the rexis. The calcific plaque is getting peeled off along with the posterior capsule. I'm aiming to size this in such a way so that the entire calcified area can be removed. It's finally done. So time to perform antivitrectomy. So it's just going to be a limited antivitrectomy. It doesn't take long. I'm using the vitrector to trim the calcified anterior opening so that I can extend it a little bit more. Now the size of the opening looks optimum. Diluted transulin acetate is used to confirm the absence of any prolapse vitreous. 
sodium hyaluronate is injected above the rexus so the space is created for easy implantation of the lens. The distal haptic of the multi-piece hydrophobic lens is gently guided above the anterior capsule. The blood entering the anterior chamber is disheartening a little but this happens because the eye is soft following vitrectomy and you expected that the blood is just sucked in. Nevertheless, the proximal haptic is then dialed into the ciliary sulcus. The cutter is again reintroduced behind the lens to remove all the blood and the OVD which has entered the vitreous cavity. In a couple of minutes, it's cleared off. Now, the OVD in front of the lens and behind it is cleared. Time to fix the lens. With the irrigation still in my left hand, the vitrector is replaced with a Sinsky hook. The optic of the lens is pushed back so that it goes behind the rexus. Now we can see the ovalization of the rexus. Uh, this is the validation that a perfect optic capture has been attained. One final round with the cutter followed by triamcinone acetate. The side ports and the main incisions are hydrated. These are the pictures in the early post-op period. The patient is quite happy with his visual recovery. To summarize, the planning and the implementation was quite good in this case. Uh, I believe the most critical step was to get this good circular opening in this calcified friable anterior capsule using the modified technique. I think that was challenging. Now, Being prepared and using the right technique does help. Once we have the rexus, Fixing the lens becomes extremely easy and eventually the refractive outcomes will be uh, superb. So that's it. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.